Hey everyone, some of you who have actually seen a lot of my videos might be looking at my attire right now and thinking, that's strange. It's not like Akil to rock the same threads in two different videos so close together in time. You're right, it's not like me. But I'm rocking this look for this video right now because it's somewhat related to the topic I want to address. I want to show that I actually can, to some degree, relate to a lot of the attitudes and a lot of the tumult that's going on on Yale University's campus right now. But for all that I can relate to it, that doesn't mean that I agree with everything that I'm seeing going on there. As a matter of fact, to be totally honest, a lot of it disturbs me. First of all, the students who have called for the resignation of the, the uh, residential college masters at Yale are wrong to do so. Second, I also oppose a, a, a laundry list of demands that the students made that the administration take the lead in combating the problem of racism on Yale's campus through a number of new policies, mandatory diversity uh, sensitivity training for faculty, students, and staff, recommending that uh, members of fraternities at Yale read black feminist literature and things of that nature. Basically, I'm opposed to the whole general approach whereby the administration of the university would take the lead in trying to tackle this problem and trying to coordinate and facilitate dialogue on campus over the problem of race at Yale. First of all, when it comes to the cause for the resignation of the Christakis, I'm completely opposed to that because at the end of the day, what this boils down to is a demand for the punishment of two members of the administration simply because a lot of students disagree with the opinions that they expressed. A lot of these students have really tried to seek the punishment of these two deans for simply speaking out in favor of what they view as free speech and for expressing views that they, you know, that don't suit them, that don't suit their worldview. While it's definitely important to confront racism, whether it's at Yale or at any other campus, by the same token, the email that these students are protesting did not actually dismiss the problem of racism on Yale's campus or elsewhere. As a matter of fact, the email that they find so controversial simply questioned whether it makes sense for school administrators to be telling students how to dress, whether it comes to Halloween or at other times. Now, Erica Christakis wrote, I don't wish to trivialize genuine concerns about cultural and personal representation and other challenges to our lived experience in a plural community. I know that many decent people have proposed guidelines on Halloween costumes from a spirit of avoiding hurt and offense. I laud those goals, in theory, as most of us do. But in practice, I wonder if we should reflect more, more transparently as a community on the consequences of an institutional exercise of implied control over college students. I myself actually didn't agree with everything in that email. I didn't think that the original message from one of the uh, Yale deans to the students giving them advice on how to avoid pe offending people with their Halloween costumes was so objectionable. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong or censorious about, you know, cautioning people about the way that they exercise their right to free speech. There's nothing wrong with saying, look, you're free to wear whatever costumes you want, but please, you know, take a moment of pause before you choose your outfits and, you know, think about whether those get-ups might offend or hurt some of the other people on campus. And uh, at least consider the option of not wearing them. I think that was the th general thrust of the original email that was sent to uh, the Yale student body. And I don't think there was anything really objectionable about that. I wouldn't have spoken out against that original email. I don't think that it did constitute censorship of uh, disfavored speech on Yale's campus. But for all of that, a lot of the students are characterizing this email sent by Erica Christakis and the subsequent defense of her email by her husband, Professor Nicholas Christakis, in some very unfair and I think inaccurate terms. They're claiming that they're trying to dismiss the experiences of uh, minority students on Yale's campus, which I don't think is accurate at all. If you look at the contents of the email or at the substance of what Nicholas Christakis, the professor, stated in his on-the-quad confrontation with a number of the students. I don't think that they are trying to delegitimize the existences or the experiences of minority students on campus at all. As a matter of fact, one of the things that Erica Christakis's email said from the very beginning was that, you know, yes, some of these costumes that students wear for Halloween on campus might be offensive. She actually said, look, if you have a problem with uh, the costumes that your fellow students are wearing, come out and talk to them. You know, tell them that you're offended. 
confront them, condemn what they're doing, you know, carry on that dialogue yourselves. But don't necessarily appeal to the administration or the, I think what she actually said was the administration should not feel that its role is to try to suppress or crack down on those offensive Halloween costumes. It's better for the students themselves to tackle the problem in the discourse on campus on a grassroots level. But a whole number of students have reacted badly even to that suggestion. That's one of the areas where I disagree with them completely. Another professor at Yale by the name of uh, Mark Oppenheimer, he's an adjunct professor, has spoken out on the subject. He wrote an article for um, a, an online magazine called Tablet, a Jewish publication, and I think it was really instructive. He has said, students are not actually responding in a way that's radical enough, and his problem with their response is not the substance of their critiques of, the, of what the Christakis have said, but rather with the way they're going about it. Instead of actually trying to tackle the problem of racism on campus th themselves, they are calling for the administration to ride to their rescue. They're trying to get deans and other college administrators to fight that battle for them in a certain sense by calling for the establishment of a formal space and procedure to voice concerns related to incidents of discrimination and hate speech at Yale and things of that nature. They seem to be demanding that the administration fulfill this in loco parentis or in the place of the parents role in their lives on campus. I agree completely with Professor Oppenheimer's perspective. At the end of the day, I don't see why adult students at one of the most prestigious universities in the world are not capable of handling this kind of discourse and dialogue on their own. I used to belong to an organization, a student-run, student-led organization at Princeton, at my Ivy League campus a decade ago, whose entire raison d'etre was to carry out this kind of dialogue on the campus. Why is it necessary for the administration to take the lead in doing so? I don't know that administrators need to take to play any role in that, uh, in that kind of process on campus. I think that these students are more than capable of carrying, out them, carrying it out themselves. The uh, students responded to allegations of racist incidences on campus, such as a recent incident in which the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity, the SAY fraternity that became notorious last spring when a couple of its chapter members at the University of Oklahoma were expelled for singing a racist chant. There was an incident in which that fraternity supposedly turned black female students away from one of its parties, claiming this party is only for white girls. It's a white girls only party. One of the things that Professor Oppenheimer writes is this. Let me put more bluntly how we ought to think. Last week, hundreds of Yale students spoke out to their dean about fraternity racism. But why didn't they march over to the fraternity and hold a silent vigil there, end of quote. I agree completely. That's the kind of approach that the students need to be taking. Why do you have to go running to Big Brother to come and handle this situation for you, to ride to your rescue and fight your battle against racism for you? I mean, it's not as if we're talking about incidences, confirmed incidences of racial violence on the Yale campus. I've seen zero evidence of any of that going on. And interestingly enough, even the allegation of, you know, um, discrimination against minority students at this Yale frat party, even those allegations have been challenged and disputed as well. And they haven't actually been confirmed and verified. Supposedly the university is investigating. It hasn't been confirmed that this even actually happened. The only reason the story is circulating is because one student claimed that this had happened on her Facebook profile and the story spread like wildfire, but it has yet to be confirmed. I've also provided a link to an article from the Daily Beast below this, uh, below this video where you can examine that incident in greater detail. So that hasn't even been confirmed and yet some of these students are demanding that the administration acknowledge that these occurrences actually happened. We don't actually know for a fact that they did happen. Personally, I actually have some doubt as to whether these white racist students at Yale in this fraternity would actually have had the guts to tell black students on campus to their faces, you're not allowed in this party because you're black. This is a white girls only party. Especially after what happened to the say members of their own fraternity in a different chapter at the University of Oklahoma last spring. Two students were expelled for singing a racist chant in private that was recorded on someone's cell phone and publicized on the internet. Especially after that happened within the past year, I have a hard time believing that it's likely that these prejudiced students in this fraternity at Yale would actually have said out loud to black students' faces, you're not allowed in here because of the color of your skin. I'm not saying that the prejudice doesn't exist, 
but I'm a bit skeptical that they would actually have had the guts to actually step to black people on campus and tell them that to their faces, given the risks they would be taking in doing so. Frankly, I think racists who are smart enough to get into a top school like Yale are smart enough to be a bit savvier about their racism. I suspect they'd be smart enough to keep it a bit more hush-hush than that. And that's just one example. These are the kinds of issues that students need to work out on campus in a free and open, freewheeling dialogue in which the students themselves take the lead. I don't see why any college students, and particularly not Ivy League college students, should have to uh, rely on that kind of, that kind of in loco parentis uh, administrative micromanagement of their social lives. When it comes to the resignation of um, the Christakis's, I mean, look, even if you think that their emails were, or I'm sorry, that Erica Christakis's email and the case made in her defense by her husband, Professor Nicholas Christakis, even if you think that the messages they sent were insensitive or what have you, that's no reason to call for their resignation. All right, so these residential college masters expressed an opinion that lots of students thought was wrong and that they found disagreeable. All right, so what? A lot of students have already done the right thing in the sense that they've spoken out against it. Some students have published articles in the campus newspaper and in other sources criticizing the content of the Christakis's comments. Go for it. If you really think they're that wrong, confront them, tackle them head on, prove them wrong but call for their resignation? For them to be penalized in that manner for their speech would not technically violate the First Amendment, simply because Yale is a private university and it's not bound by the Constitution as a result. But there is a larger moral and political principle of free speech that I think should apply at all universities and in society at large. And trying to get college administrators, even at a private university, fired from their positions simply because they expressed an opinion that lots of students disagreed with that definitely violates the spirit of free speech, if not the legal letter of it, and it definitely violates the larger moral and political principle of free speech that I think should predominate in society at large. I understand that it can be difficult to be a minority student at a top school like Yale. I lived that experience myself. But at the same time, I have a hard time believing that students who are intelligent enough, learned enough, hardworking enough, and just plain resilient enough to make it to a school like Yale, especially in this day and age when college admissions are more competitive than ever, are somehow so fragile emotionally and psychologically that they can't even function as students anymore simply because a certain administrator or a couple of administrators expressed a viewpoint with which they disagree. For example, one Silliman student actually wrote this. I have had to watch my friends defend their right to this institution. This email and the subsequent reaction to it have interrupted their lives. I have friends who are not going to class, who are not doing their homework, who are losing sleep, who are skipping meals, and who are having breakdowns. I'm sorry. I honestly do not believe that students of normal, sound mind, who are mentally and emotion emotionally healthy, have any excuse for reacting that badly to these expressions, purported expressions of racism on campus. You know, if we were talking about actual violent hate crimes, that would be one thing. But so far, what we have are a number of different personal experiences of, you know, microaggressions and things of that nature that students are claiming on campus. We have an email written by a, a residential college master, which I think, even though I don't think it was completely correct, and I found some cause to disagree with it in part, I don't think that it was the least bit offensive, and I don't think it warrants this kind, these kinds of protests at all. And of course, we have an allegation that a fraternity turned away minority students from one of its parties because of their skin color. An allegation that the fraternity denies and that has yet to be proven by any shred of actual empirical evidence. I'm sorry, but this set of facts does not justify those kinds of overblown emotional reactions. It does not justify losing sleep or not going to class because you're so upset about the supposed problem of racism on Yale's campus. I honestly think that minority students, especially at a school like Yale, the, the kind, the best and brightest students in the country, if not in the whole world, are more than smart enough and tough enough, or at least capable of being tough enough, to handle this kind of problem of purported racism on the campus without running to Big Brother in the administration to come and save the day for them. Now, I know I'm going to step on a lot of toes and knock a lot of noses out of joint by saying that, but 
as a black man who went to an Ivy League school and graduated and observed a lot of what goes on in these schools, including in the party uh, in their party scenes, I honestly think I'm personally directly qualified to say whatever is going on at Yale. I'm not saying there's no racism there, but whatever is going on there, students there, minority and non-minority alike, are capable of finding the strength in themselves to deal with it without going all to pieces. Let me make one thing clear. I am not saying that the racism is not there. I'm not saying that it's not deplorable. I'm not saying that it's not a problem. And I'm not saying that students, minority students, shouldn't respond to it at all, that they should just have to take it. Not at all. They shouldn't have to take it. They shouldn't take it. They should confront the people who are supposedly behind these episodes of racism on campus. Like Professor Oppenheimer said, if you have a problem with this fraternity, hold your candlelight vigil in front of the fraternity's property. Confront them directly and say, look, we'd like to have a conversation with you guys about what goes on in these four walls. You know, it's not cool. We've heard a claim that you guys are turning away minority students because they're not white. We want to let you know that's not cool. We're not going to sit still for that. We want to have a conversation with you. Will you guys have the guts to step to us and have that conversation with us? That is what these students at Yale need to be doing. Forget the administration. I mean, what are you, children? You're not children anymore. You're adults. Man up, woman up. I don't know if there's gender neutral, non cisgendered language that I could find to get that same message across. Grow up. Man up, woman up, grow up. You are adults now, okay? And this whole idea that even the residential college master's job is to shield you from the expression of views that you don't like so that you can be comfortable emotionally or intellectually or psychologically comfortable, that idea is also for the birds. That's another uh, idea that some of these students have sent, another message that they've sent. Some of the students who confronted Nicholas Christakis on the quad at Yale actually said, it is your job to create a place of comfort and home for the students who live in Silliman. You have not done that. When he said, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that, the student actually screamed and cursed at him and said, why did you accept the position? If that is what you think about being a master, you should step down. It is, it is not about creating an intellectual space. It is not. Do you understand that? It is about creating a home here, and you are not doing that. That is completely absurd. I don't think the job of any administrator at any university, public or private, is to make students comfortable by shielding them from any experiences or any attitudes or beliefs that might upset them, that might hurt their feelings, that might damage their self-esteem. That is not the job of any university. The job of a university is to teach students how to engage in free and open inquiry. And that includes learning how to confront ideas that you disagree with, including the ones that you abhor on your own and in concert with other people around you on a voluntary and cooperative basis. It means learning how to face down these challenges of prejudice and bigotry without expe expecting authorities and power to save the day for you. And black students in particular, given the oppression that our ancestors suffered for several centuries and that they survived and overcame, given that we are a people who suffered several centuries of enslavement and segregation and state-sponsored subjugation and yet still managed to produce doctors, lawyers, activists, theologians, academics, entrepreneurs, scientists of all kinds, and of course, the leader of the free world. Given all the things that we've accomplished in the face of far worse oppression suffered by our ancestors, I think that to pretend that you are going to lose sleep because an administrator at your university sent out an email to the campus that expressed opinions you disagree with, I'm sorry. That kind of oversensitivity is an insult to our forebears, to our ancestors, to our parents and grandparents, and all of those who came before us and busted their behinds and shed blood, gave their lives in many cases, for us to be able to benefit from the kind of education that these schools offer us. I'm sorry, but I, I am not in agreement with the way that the Yale students are going about dealing with this situation. I don't agree with most of their demands. In fact, I'm not sure that I agree with any of the demands that they've listed. I definitely don't agree with their demands to get these two administrators fired. I don't agree that the email that the that Nick, uh, Erica Christakis originally sent was objectionable or prejudicial. I don't agree that the administration has a duty to simply acknowledge that these purported incidents of racism on campus have happened without actual proof. And I don't believe that it is the job of Yale's administration or any other university's administration to coddle American students 
of any backgrounds by shielding them from ideas they don't like. Man up, woman up, grow up. Tackle these attitudes that you find so problematic. Take those matters into your own hands. Not violently, of course, but intellectually. There have already been discussions on campus at Yale concerning these issues. Those discussions need to continue, and students need to take the need to take the lead in facilitating, coordinating those uh, and coordinating those discussions and making this dialogue happen. That is the right way to confront this particular kind of apparent prejudice and discrimination on a campus like Yale, which after all is home to some of the most privileged people on the planet, including the minority students. I'm sorry, but Yaleys, I honestly think y'all are off the rails on this one. And uh, I would hate to think that there's anyone at my alma mater who is taking this same kind of approach or who feels the temptation to take this same kind of approach to these problems on campus. There's a better way than this, folks. We are stronger than this. We are better than this. That's my take on it. Looking forward to the discussion. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure this one is going to be quite the barn burner. Can't wait to see it. Peace out.